Hi, everyone. My name is Caesar Williams, and I am the Artistic Director of the Fire This Time Festival, and welcome to the Fireside Chats. It is my honor to introduce you all to Season 15 playwright Monique Pappas-Williams, whose play The Mural will be featured as part of our 10-minute play festival. Welcome, Monique. Hi, Caesar. Hi, how are you doing today? My pleasure to be here. <laughs> um, we are so excited about your play. The mural. Uh, we were as as a as a as a selection committee. We were super excited about the idea of having a play that introduced um, artistry in different forms. So your characters, uh, Nia and Riz, are artists, um, visual artists, and that was lovely. And we, you also bring in a lot of other issues in terms of mass incarceration, uh, you know, the justice system, the people who are left behind you know, uh, who we don't always think about or, or or give focus to, the loved ones who are left behind, and how do they deal with their grief and their mourning and express it through their creativity. And you do this all in a 10-minute play. So congratulations. Thank you. It's certainly an honor to be a part of the festival. So I'm excited about that. Thank you. We are Thank excited you. as well. Uh, to get us started, I just wanted to open up with a very basic question, which is, tell us about your play. Tell us about The Mural. Um, the Mural follows a couple, um, well, a couple who is in limbo. They once were together, and Riz has returned home after being incarcerated for about four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are both visual artists. Um, Nia was inspired by Riz. Um, she learned from him. He was somewhat of a mentor indirectly from, you know, the, being in the relationship. And uh, during his time away, she kind of began to get recognition for her work. Um, she poured herself into her work and that became her focus um, in dealing with probably the loneliness uh, the the abandonment. Um, she poured herself into her work, and now he is back. And so, um, she is trying to um, navigate that as well as her voice as an artist. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. That's that's exactly it. And it's a uh, it's a it's a heart wrenching journey to watch these characters navigate. Yes, that's it is wonderful. Uh, what would you uh, as the writer, like the audience to walk away with uh, after seeing your play? Um, I think for me, um, the story came out of just grass, uh, grappling with uh, my own work as an artist, even though I'm not a visual artist, as an actor, as a writer. And, um, you know, telling my, my truth uh, being transparent. I think I would want the audience, what do we do when we have these platforms, when we have the fire this time, when, when once we are, because, you know, we start out as artists or whatever our pet teaching, because I'm that as well. And then, you know, what happens when it becomes about, you know, uh, the money or, yeah. You know, you know what? What do we do? Do we stay true to kind of how we started out, uh, connecting to our truths, or you know, we put in a compromising position that we start writing for the big stage, or we start draw a uh, painting for the big stage, and what what that looks like, and um, also there's that piece of my story that I, you know, would like. You know, when, when there are larger platforms, when it comes to activism, you know, when it's the big corporations or the big church, um, we can, you know, sometimes we move forward, but, and we, we can give or we can donate or whatever the case may be. But what, uh, what happens when it's the person right in front of us, the person in our family? Um, so that, that's kind of what I, you know, what came out of it for me and, you know, why I wrote it and what I was gra grasping, grappling with for myself. Yes. And so that, you know, is probably the question that I would have for the audience. Uh, what other projects are you currently working on? Are you excited about, passionate about uh, right now? 
Um, I have another play that I wrote called um, Crescent City Rebirth. Mm -hmm. And um, that play is going to be a part of National Black Theater's um, micro development series mm -hmm. in, Jan in a couple of weeks, January 18th. So I'm very excited. It is online. It's an opportunity for playwrights to um, showcase their work to producers and directors and that type of thing and uh, develop the work further. So I'm really excited to also uh, be a part, you know, get to know that that organization as well. Yes, and, I have, I've had yeah. the honor of working with uh, MBT in their uh, I Am Soul residency in the past. It is a wonderful program. Yes, that's yeah. that's what. Out, that's what we'll be doing. So that's the next thing up for me. Cool. But you're from New Orleans. So yes, you grew up in New Orleans. What what were you like as a child? I think I was, you know, I think what I'm told, I never felt like I was quiet. But, you know, when I kind of examine like where I am now, I think maybe there may be a part of me who was uh, kind of introverted and shy and quiet. I know I was always daydreaming, thus the writing uh, makes sense now, <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> Probably some adults thought, you know, I was like spacing out, but there's always a story going on in my head. Yes. <laughs> so, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I can see myself, um, you know, I can see that in myself, just creative, there was never a time when I wasn't interested in the arts. Okay. So, um, and you know, I had I had parents who nurtured that. I was in arts program. I started in college majoring in journalism, but eventually switched um to theater. So there so the interest had always been there. But yeah, so I I don't think that I am probably much different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe a little more outgoing. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm similar uh, to that. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you could go to the Target and get a time machine and go back to your childhood self, what would you tell yourself? I would tell myself a lot of things, but I think the main thing that I would tell my childhood self is to take risk and be bold. Anything that you... Um, not to operate in fear or judgment of others. Um, I would say uh, definitely that to anything that you want to try, you you know, do it. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. Really nice. Yes, I feel the same. I love that. Uh, yeah. What is what is something great about you that very few people know? <laughs> Well, I can answer that. I think I can answer that two ways. So something I think that uh, people know that I find is great is, you know, I, I've i been told, you know, uh, my sense of like humanity and giving and, you know, uh, how I, and being nurturing. But I think a lot of people that know me know, I think people maybe that don't know me <laughs> might not interpret it that way. Um because, you know, with artists, sometimes we can be very withdrawn and kind of in our own world. And so sometimes people may perceive that as being standoffish. But I swear we're not. And we just always have a story in our head. And that kind of supersedes sometimes what's right in front of us. I think something uh, that people might not know um, is that I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Um that can be great and not so great, but, you know, I'm learning to appreciate it as I get older, you know. So I think those are the things. I think it's great to be, um, you know, compassionate and, and empathetic. Um, it serves me as a writer. I think I can, I think I can exemplify both sides of a story if I'm addressing an issue. Um, so I think that that's great. I think that's probably... You know, that's what I strive for. If you were not doing what you're doing now, what would you be doing? I think that, you know, really uh, um, being in performing arts, there's really nothing else. But if I had to choose something and just something that I thought about, obviously for security purposes is being uh, going into law and being an attorney. 
uh, mm -hmm. because of it, you know, you have that ability to advocate for people less fortunate or who may not have a voice or who need help, that type of thing. That's beautiful. So, but there's always the question of the justice system being yes. fair, right? So <laughs> then there's that. So, you and know, we, I kind of have that same outlet as an artist in a different way. Yeah, it's in your play. I was going to say it's in the mural. Yeah. <laughs> it's in your play. It's, it's a lot of these things that you've spoken about in, in, our, in our chat are all in the play. Um, our idea of advocacy from a distance versus up close, the fairness of the justice system. Um, I think it's really miraculous how you have managed to get all of that into this soup of a, a of a of the of into the mural into this play. Um, Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, you know, it's the, it's so funny that you say that. I always I always tell people, oh, I'm not political. I'm not political. But then, you know, as people, you know, as people see my stories you know uh they they if they find something that it is very you know political and I, you know i don't i you know i don't approach my work trying to be uh to have some type of commentary on some you know political aspect but it happens so yeah yeah i love it is there anything else you'd like to share about yourself about your work the play anything you know i hope I hope many people come out and enjoy all the fabulous uh, playwrights. It's amazing who, you know, the talent that comes out of the fire this time. So I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, and I hope I hope everyone enjoys, enjoys our work. Oh, great. Well, Monique, thank you so much for taking time to chat with me today. Um, I want to thank our audience for taking time to uh, to listen and to watch. And I, to again remind everyone, please come out and support the Fire This Time Festival. Uh, we open on January 18th. We run January 18th through the 28th at the Wild Project down on the Lower East Side. And we look forward to seeing each of you in the theater. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.